Hi, it's Carola and today I'm doing a collaboration with Claude Neuf. Hi. Today we're talking about historical places in Paris. We're going to the sites where something historic has happened that everybody knows about and we're showing you the exact location if you if you can find it and as it's a collaboration so we're also doing a video on the channel Quadenov in which we're searching book locations so what's your channel about? So my channel is all about French German culture differences so if you're a German speaker feel free to visit my channel <laughs> talking about in this video are Henry IV who was the heir of the French throne but he was um, Protestant and to be able to become king he had to become Catholic because the French would not accept it um, Protestant king. Charlotte Coday was a French revolutionary but she was more moderate than others. She got famous for killing Jean-Paul Marat who was the owner of a radical French newspaper and in that newspaper he called for total terror. As she was more moderate, she thought that uh, he had to be killed in order to not destroy the revolution itself. Louis XVI was the grandson of Louis XV and he supported the American in the American Independence War and he made France go even deeper into debt. Everything became really expensive by raising taxes. So it was quite unpopular. And when he was king, the French Revolution happened. Marie Antoinette is the daughter of the Austrian Empress Maria Theresia. Historically, the Austrians and the French didn't get along. But in order to forge the alliance, Marie Antoinette, her daughter, had to marry the uh, French heir to the throne, who was Louis XVI. Even though Henry changed to Catholicism to become King of France, Catholics were still very skeptic of him. And one day, he was driving through the Rue de la Ferronnière, when a Catholic fanatic jumped into his carriage and killed the king. So we're right now standing in Rue de la Ferronnière and there is a plaque that shows where exactly he was killed. So let's go over and try to find that plaque. We found it. We were actually looking for something small and uh, suddenly we would look down and realize we're standing right in front of that massive, huge plaque. So it's not just uh, like a memory plaque, it's really the size of the carriage. In the beginning of the French Revolution, the French people insisted that the royal family move to Paris. So Louis and his family moved from Versailles into the Palais de Tuileries, which doesn't exist anymore, but the park still exists. But after a failed attempt to flee the country, the whole family was moved into the temple prison. And from the temple prison, he was taken away to Place de la Concorde to the guillotine. I'm currently standing on Place de la Concorde, which in 1793 was Place de la Révolution. And this is the space where the guillotine stood. So here we are at the place where on the 21st January of 1793 Louis says, so Louis XVI, who was executed by the guillotine and because there was so much noise from a lot of drums and people watching his execution he couldn't give this last speech and as you can tell by the cars behind me the noise is still the same today. The building you can see behind me is the Conciergerie. It is on Ile de la Cité. The Conciergerie was used as a prison in the revolution. After the family Capet, so king and queen, the, ki uh, the king's sister and the, their children had been imprisoned in the temple. And after Louis had been executed, 
Marie Antoinette was moved and she was moved to the prison conciergerie. She was constantly watched. So even when she was changing into the gown that uh, she would wear for her execution, the guards refused to turn around and give her some privacy. Her son was taken away from her and she had lost her husband. So the conditions uh, that were quite okay in the temple worsened a lot over there. If you want to look at the conciergerie, you can still see the prison cells. Some of them are so small that you can't stand in them and you can't lay down on the floor either. And she was tried and uh, convicted as being against the revolution. The morning of her execution, she was put into a cart. Her husband had been picked up by a coach, but for her it was only an open cart so that she was seen from everybody and they started it from here they went over to the rue saint honore and then ended up at place de la concorde where the guillotine was waiting we're standing in the rue saint honore and this is where the cart with marie antoinette on it passed by the painter jacques louis david was sitting in the restaurant right over there cafe de la Régence. He was watching her go by and he drew a little sketch, this one, which is the last known. The painter Jacques-Louis David belonged to a more radical branch of the revolutionaries who wanted the death of the king and queen and uh, the whole royal family. He was a friend of Robespierre, while Charlotte Coudet belonged to the Girondins and uh, she was a more moderate revolutionary. In their idea, the king and queen could be left alive. They just weren't allowed to rule. On the 16th of October, 1793, Marie Antoinette arrived here in that open cart. When she was walking up the guillotine, she accidentally stepped on the executioner's foot. So she said, pardon, monsieur and uh, apologized for stepping on his foot and those were her last words before being executed. Charlotte Coudet came to Paris. Charlotte tried to meet Marat so she went over to his house. She talked to him for 15 minutes and then she stabbed a knife into his chest and he died. She wasn't able to escape the house so she was arrested and sent to prison. And we're back on Place de la Concorde, which was Place de la Révolution, and this is where Charlotte Coudet also was executed. I hope you liked the video, and don't, please don't forget to check out the collaboration video on Yasmin's channel, Quad Enough. Please leave a comment under the video. See you next time. Bye!